So today we're going to be learning about the LAC operon. The LAC operon was designed for the bacteria E. coli to break down lactose. Now bacteria have a number of different genes used to achieve a task, which are placed conveniently next to each other. The LAC operon genes LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A deal with breaking down lactose. Now upstream from the operon, which is this area itself from the promoter, the operator, and the genes following is the LAC1 promoter and the LAC1 gene. So the LAC1 promoter is an area along the DNA where RNA polymerase can grab on and transcribe the LAC1 gene making mRNA which codes for the LAC repressor protein shown right here. Now after the LAC1 gene there's a terminator which is a sequence of DNA that marks the end of this gene. So in the operon, we have the LAC promoter and the operator. The operator you can think of as a switch, which turns the operon on and off. In the absence of lactose, the LAC repressor is active, meaning it binds to the operator right here. You can think of this as the off position. The LAC Z gene produces beta galactosidase, which breaks galactose into glucose and galactose. The LAC-Y gene encodes lactose permease, a protein which becomes embedded in the cytoplasmic membrane to enable transport of lactose into the cell. LAC-A gene encodes acetyltransferase, but it's not as important for the operon function. So lactose passively enters the cell through the help of lactose permease, and a metabolite of lactose forms called allolactose. This can bind to the repressor. So now, if we have lots of lactose present, this is lactose here, the lactose will bind to the repressor, which will actually change the shape of the repressor. In the absence of lactose, the lac repressor is active, meaning it's binded to the operator in the off position. So this is the active repressor protein. So with lactose binded to the repressor and the shape changing, the repressor detaches from the operator. Now that the repressor is inactive, we can allow RNA polymerase to attach to the promoter region, driving down DNA to make the proteins designed to break lactose down from transcribing the LAC Z, LAC Y, and LAC A genes. So when RNA polymerase transcribes the LAC Z gene, some mRNA is made. This mRNA makes the protein beta-galactosidase, which breaks lactose down into glucose and galactose. So our lactose are going to be broken down by beta-galactosidase here, as shown. So the repressor now returns to its original shape once the lactose concentration in the cell decreases. And then it again binds to the operator, stopping RNA polymerase from transcribing the genes here. It physically stops it, cannot continue through. The repressor, again, is in an active state. So the LAC operon is also regulated by other compounds, such as isopropyl beta d thiogalactoside which is frequently used as an inducer of the LAC operon. It can also be regulated by phenyl beta d galactose which is a substrate for beta-galactosidase. Other compounds serve as colorful indicators of beta-galactosidase activity. Another example would be ONPG, which is cleaved to produce the intensively yellow compound orthonitrophenol, and that is commonly used as a substrate for beta galactose as well. Colonies that produce beta galactosidase are turned blue by a compound referred to as X gal. And of course, we have allolactose, which is an isomer of lactose. We're now going to move on to the trip operon. So the trip operon is essentially the opposite of the lac operon. It is designed to make tryptophan when it's not present. So tryptophan is one of the 20 essential amino acids required to make protein. It can be found in poultry and milk, but can be a problem if bacteria is lacking this amino acid. But guess what? There's no need to fear because we have the trip operon, which is designed to make tryptophan if it's not present. So moving on, we have the genes of the trip operon. Trip E, trip D, trip C, trip B, and trip A. We also have the promoter region where RNA polymerase can attach on. The operator, which is the switch, 
basically for the operon, and then the genes following. We also have the repressor protein over here, which was made from the regulatory gene TRYP-R. So with the presence of tryptophan in the cell, the tryptophan is going to fit inside the repressor, which then binds to the operator, setting the operator to the off position. Now keeping in mind that the repressor is active. So let's say we have no tryptophan. We're going to change the shape of the repressor and it's going to come off the operator, which is then going to allow RNA polymerase to attach onto the promoter region and drive down the operon, making the genes of trip E, trip D, trip C, trip B, and trip A, which are then going to create more tryptophan. So now we have more tryptophan in the cell and our problem is solved. We can now go back to the repressor being in its active state with tryptophan being attached and the repressor then binding to the operator. So just to show you, RNA polymerase physically cannot make its way down the DNA sequence with the repressor in the way. Tryptophan in this case acts as a signal molecule which activates the trip repressor protein in the presence of tryptophan. When it acts this way, it's called a core presser because it binds to a regulatory protein, reducing the expression of the operon's gene. The trip operon is an example of a negative feedback mechanism because the rate of tryptophan synthesis decreases as tryptophan is present in the cell environment. So notice that we're not gonna make any more tryptophan when we have enough. But once we run out of tryptophan, we're going to begin this function again.